Okay, here on Rocket Elijah, we've looked at Animal Crossing mysteries in the past, but what if there are mysteries that go so much deeper? It always seems like the more that we find out about this game, the more questions we have about the way that the game's universe works and how these characters are more thought out than you would think, but then there's still a lot of questions that kind of come out seemingly of nowhere. Over the last few months, I've compiled a list of questions that we don't have the answers to, and while some of these go really deep, some of these are surprisingly surface level, but to this day, we've never actually gotten an official lore explanation as to what's going on. So let's start off with a simple existential question. What happened to humans in Animal Crossing? Okay, come on, I know it's silly on the surface, but there is maybe some deeper hints to what's been going on here, and it might seem a little unsettling. Okay, this is what we know for certain about humans in Animal Crossing. We know that we play as one, and we, unless there's another player in our town, are the only human in the Animal Crossing world. What else do we have? We have a bunch of human like animals that act like humans but are clearly animals. We get letters from our parents who we assume are humans but we never actually see them in the games. Matter of fact, one letter in the first Animal Crossing game will even question the player for why they choose to live with a bunch of animals, alluding to the fact that most humans or some humans choose not to live with animals. But then an interesting thing shows up in the Animal Crossing New Horizons Museum. If you stand over here, there's this evolution type section that shows the lineage of how different species of Animal Crossing villagers evolved from their original animal, which is interesting, but it does kind of paint a picture of potentially what's happened here, suggesting that real animals have evolved to the intelligence and level on par of that of humans. But then where did humans come from? We have this piece of uh, ancestry, I guess, to explain our own lineage. It's really not too much to go off of, but it's something that tells us for sure what's happening in the Animal Crossing universe. Now, mind you, my anthropology skills are limited. I took one class in college, and I think I got a B minus. This is the skull of an Australopithecus, which oftentimes is referred to as, like, the fossils of like ancient humans and real life science. Now while Australopiths can be used to describe the overall genus that does include modern humans, this specific skull shown in the game here is most likely based off of the real world discovery of Mrs. Pless, an Australopithecus Africanus specimen. These artifacts that are found nowadays by anthropologists aren't actually that of ancient humans. The significance of these findings actually suggest a common ancestor that humans and the genus of Australopithecus may both have separately come from, but in evolution theory, they're not a part of the same lineage, just more so the same family tree. The evolution isn't as straightforward as what Animal Crossing's little line here suggests. Okay, so this might be out there, but there's either one of two things happening in Animal Crossing. Either this is just the very common, basic way of showing the idea of evolution in the museum here, or, and mind you, this is like a very big or, what if Animal Crossing takes place in a timeline where the Australopithecus genus of hominins didn't go extinct and instead continued to evolve into our Animal Crossing villager? Then technically, Technically, this line would be correct, but it could also show why some other things don't make sense. Like, for instance, the anatomy or the skeleton items in Animal Crossing do not at all look like the types of skeleton that our Animal Crossing villager character would have. I mean, look at these side by side. Do I think Nintendo has thought this far into it? Probably not. But this theory is definitely a theory that nobody is talking about. Plenty of people have asked the question, but nobody's kind of gone down this rabbit hole. I'll take my science paycheck now. Thank you very much. Now, I know this is kind of out there, but if you think about about it, as wild as it might seem, it is at least a theory that we could use to go off of, and it's interesting that all of this information has just been there right in front of us since New Horizons release. And I know that this line right here under the display might indicate that it's a branch of, not a direct evolutionary line, but where the split would have been is way further off than the other examples shown, so yeah, I don't know. Of course, this does ask for greater context as to what's going on in the larger Animal Crossing universe if this game series takes place in a timeline where another species of human-like creatures creatures also roam the planet. What happened to the rest of the humans? Are they still out there? We know they existed at one point. We'll have to touch on that a little bit more in a bit because there are some other interesting theories related to this that I want to talk about, but first, there's another question we have. Okay, so we did a whole video on every single special Animal Crossing villager and their lore and backstory, but you know what we didn't talk about? Where they live? You wouldn't think this bothers me as much as it does, but it bothers me quite a bit that we have all of these other villagers that are apparently a part of the town just as much as any other little villager. Matter of fact, they definitely contribute more than the other villagers. We don't have all the answers, but for the sake of my headcanon, I'd like to think I've figured out where some villagers might possibly live, which at least gives us some closure to think where they would sleep. Like, let's start with Timmy and Tommy. In the upgraded Nook's Cranny store, there is this, like, little staircase thing here that's closed off to the 
public. Maybe there's a little attic where they have some beds they sleep in. Maybe. Come on, we're trying to do mental gymnastics here to make this all make sense. Okay, residence service has to be where we would see either Tom Nook or Isabel live. I guess we could argue that Tom Nook could live at Nook's crannies also. But what about Isabel? She's always working there, so she has to work close by. Now, there is this door back here. We can't go in the door, obviously, but maybe there's like a little hallway with a set of rooms back there and it's more than just like a storage closet. I guess being a resident service secretary is a live-in job in Animal Crossing. At first, I was like, there's no way this building is way too small to have a whole hallway with separate rooms maybe attached to it, but we do know, though, that Animal Crossing buildings are never fully scaled to size. Like, for instance, the museum is about the same size as resident services and has so much space in it that I guess we could argue maybe there's a couple of rooms back here where characters like Isabel or Tom Nook could live. What about Orville and Wilbur? I guess they could live off island and travel in for their shifts, but they're always there. Maybe there's some barracks if you go left down this hallway when taking off for a flight. The exterior does have a flight tower, albeit small. Maybe it's a decorative flight tower and that's actually like a little apartment attached to the airport? I don't know. Maybe Wilbur and Orville sleep in the plane when no one's around. The roost is easy enough. There's gotta be like a little bedroom or something back tucked away through this little doorway. Blathers just sleeps during the day all day in his position anyways. So I guess he doesn't need living quarters because he actually sleeps every single day here if it's daytime. And Celeste got demoted, so she's not even a part of the island regularly, so she must travel in on nights where she around. At the very least, I like that New Horizons has its special villagers maybe potentially having places that they could live. Like, in New Leaf with Isabel, I guess you'd have to sleep on this couch or something. <laughs> and then look at this. In the Abel's sister's store, there is another little door here on the left that could suggest maybe another couple of rooms or some housing or something. Did Nintendo actually think this through for this game for the first time ever? Honestly, I'm actually a little bit impressed. Now, there are all types of other characters that do come by your island, but the argument could be made that they all live off island and the fact that we can go to Harv's Island and we see that they all have RV setups has to mean something, right? You know, I think this was a very valid argument and question back in the older Animal Crossing days, especially when we had like a police station and we had Tortimer, Phyllis, Pelly, and Pete, and that little train monkey who's oddly suspicious. I think it's safe to say that for the most part, Nintendo actually maybe resolved this question by just putting little subtleties like doors that at least allow the player's imagination to go and fill in the gaps as to what's behind the door. No, it's not an actual answer to the question, but it's enough for us to do the little mental gymnastics in our own headcanon to be like, okay, well maybe that's where these characters live. If you are so inclined to actually ask the question in the first place, where do the special characters live if we're out there building houses for all these other villagers that are moving in? I did think it was interesting that Tom Nook doesn't even have a house of his own, but he wants us to go collect wood so he can build and sell houses for other villagers that haven't even moved to the island yet. Kind of interesting. Nope, we don't know what his living situation is. Maybe he has a huge penthouse inside of resident services in the attic or something that we don't know about, and it's really, really cool. Very high-tech stuff. Very nice. Nonetheless, the little doors and hallways that they snuck into the game, very cool little detail that paints this bigger picture, I think. Okay, then there's this theory that I've seen around before that I've never actually had the opportunity to talk about in a video, so I'm glad we finally get to, but does Porter have a secret identity or a second life? Okay, get this. The little monkey at the beginning of Animal Crossing, the original game, he has a cool job as, like, the train Porter person. But here's where it gets interesting. In Animal Crossing Wild World, they removed the train system part of the game and replaced it with the gate system, which has Copper and Booker standing guard instead. This would also carry over an Animal Crossing city full. So with that, Porter essentially would become unemployed or he's fired. He no longer is needed in Animal Crossing games. But then you know what happened in Wild World and City Folk? Firstly with Wild World, a new Animal Crossing villager who's also a monkey named Champ was added into the pool of potential characters. While there is no explicit homage or reference to Champ being Porter, possibly, potentially, there's the obvious similarities in their appearance, even if their shirts are different colors. Now, the inside of his house could resemble a train station. He definitely has a toy train in his house, though. Okay, his catchphrase is Choo Choo. This guy is, like, really struggling to overcome the fact that he lost his job as a train porter, possibly, here. So with that evidence, fans over the years 
players have questioned, is Champ the same character as Porter? Well, if you played Animal Crossing New Leaf, you would find that this game brought back the train station into Animal Crossing once again, for the first time since the original game. And with that, Porter returns as well, once again, being this monkey character who is at the train. And then, all of a sudden, Champ is removed as a villager character in Animal Crossing New Leaf moving forward. Could it be that this character, when needed again, took the job back, or Nintendo put him back in the game at his old job, and then also removed Champ from the pool of characters because that character was now being used and they can't have duplicate characters in the same place at the same time? I'll be honest, originally when hearing this theory, I never cared for it. But the fact that they took the character out again in New Leaf after bringing Porter back, I think that should solidify it. We haven't seen anything of Porter or of Champ since New Leaf, other than the small appearance of Porter in Animal Crossing New Horizons if you use the amiibo in the coffee shop. So I don't know, maybe you guys should tell me if you think that Champ and Porter are in fact the same character. Okay, you know one thing that I really get a kick out of? Low stake conspiracy theories. And there's one from Animal Crossing Wild World that I just can't help but to just overthink and put pieces together that probably aren't there. And in the grand scheme of everything, if it did turn out to be true, it wouldn't matter because it's so low stakes. Like it doesn't change anything at the end of the day. But hear me out. If I showed you a picture of Gracie Grace on the screen right now, do you see this? And then I put the text here, did she commit insurance fraud? What is your immediate immediate knee-jerk reaction to that. For most of you, you probably thought, I don't know, maybe, probably? I don't think too many people out there are like, no, Gracie would never. Okay, Gracie's an interesting character though, because in the older Animal Crossing games, she would just show up in a car, and apparently she could make people clean her car, which that's kind of cruel. But cars for the most part were usually a pretty rare item in Animal Crossing over the years. You would only occasionally see vehicles. So for a character just to have a big red sports car convertible was kind of a big deal. So there's no denying that Gracie is successful and probably has a decent chunk of change, but in Animal Crossing Wild World, if you are fishing, sometimes you'll pull up a car tire and the text will say, is this from Gracie's car? Hmm. Okay, like I said before, we know Gracie has money, but she doesn't have that much money because she still travels town to town. She still works a regular day job. So while we know she has some money and she has a nice car, what is one thing that she doesn't have as of Wild World that she does have in the next game? I don't know, prime retail commercial real estate in a large shopping district of a city? Also, we never see Gracie's car again, ever. I can't help but to wonder if maybe in a way to maybe get like a down payment to get approved for a mortgage of some big property as grand as a Gracie Grace store, maybe Gracie kind of knocked her car into the ocean and claimed it as a insurance loss and then used that money to fund her new store. Hey, it wouldn't be the first time there was a full on insurance scam written into Animal Crossing with the character Lyle. Why else would Wild World hint at the fact that Gracie's car could have ended up in the ocean and it would explain why there's tires in the ocean too. Sure, this argument wouldn't hold up in the court of law, but I'm just bringing up maybe a different theory to look at the game in a different way. That's why I said it was a low stakes conspiracy theory. But at the end of the day, you can't look at Gracie Grace now and think she maybe didn't commit insurance fraud, but I just, I just like that out there. I just think we need to consider all of the options before we for sure know that Gracie isn't the type of person to commit insurance fraud. And I don't think anyone has a case for why she wouldn't do that. Okay, then there's this one that's a quick one, but still an intriguing one nonetheless. There are a couple of characters throughout Animal Crossing that we hear, but we don't know what their name is, and we also don't know what they look like, but they're talking to the player character in real time. Firstly, there's the clerk from the Marquis in Animal Crossing City Folk. We know that it is a character with a female voice and never talks about their personal life. They're pretty limited to what you can actually do talking to her, so yeah, we don't know much about her. Then also related to the marquee itself is the MC, which is another character who announces Dr. Shrunk or Frillard coming up on stage. There has been speculation though that both the MC and the clerk could be the same person, and that would make sense. Like, they take the tickets, after everyone's seated, they go back to like maybe another window that overlooks the area, and then like introduces the comedy set before the comedian comes on stage. Like, it's possible. And then there's the mysterious phone clerk in Animal Crossing Wild World, which is the character that you call when you want to make some changes to your game settings. This one's a little bit interesting though, because we could get some implicit ideas about who this person is, suggesting that this clerk is not an animal. Could this be 
one of the only other human confirmed characters in all of Animal Crossing? We don't really know. The only thing we have to go off of is the fact that when this character talks on the phone, instead of using the regular Animalese voice, the character talks in the BBBs, which sounds like this. Unless you change the settings, usually this voice is only implied for like the player character when they're talking out loud or thinking out loud, I guess, on the screen. Or like maybe sometimes Phyllis's little words she says under her breath might show up in that type of sound effect too. Or technically snowmen, which are based off of humans, talk like this as well. So we've narrowed it down to the person on the other line of the phone is either a human or maybe a snowman. So as far as these three mysterious characters that we don't actually get to see go into the world of mysteries as we don't know who exactly they are. Okay, now let me ask you this. Have you ever stopped and wondered, what do Animal Crossing villagers eat? This ended up being something a lot deeper than maybe what I had first initially expected when looking into this topic. And I have so many more questions now that we need answers to. Firstly, as far as I can tell with the real introduction of food coming in a later update with Animal Crossing New Horizons, I went through every single possible dish that is available in the game. And unless I'm clearly missing something, it looks like there's actually no meals or dishes that can be created Created that have meat in them outside of, well, seafood. I was gonna bring up like this age old discussion point from like the Pokemon series where, you know, in things like the anime, they'll talk about eating a burger or something and you're wondering if they eat mill tanks or something like that. I was fully prepared for a similar situation in Animal Crossing, but no, it looks like according to all the dishes that they are strictly, at the very least, resigned to a pescatarian diet. It doesn't rule every possibility out and there might still be some food items that I'd like to make maybe look into if we can find some more in the catalog of all the items across every single Animal Crossing game. One thing I found interesting was there is for Turkey Day the turkey casserole and if you remember from the older Animal Crossing games on Turkey Day, Franklin is hiding and paranoid and scared but in the later Animal Crossing games he's more open and out there. Well this turkey casserole item is a little interesting. Technically we never see what's inside the container. For all we know, it's not an actual turkey, and maybe Franklin is the one behind that, making sure it's not an actual turkey. Or maybe he's a cannibal. I don't know. Now, I did have another question when it comes to the food in Animal Crossing, because if you look at some of the other villagers in Animal Crossing, you'll see sometimes they have some stuff on them, and things that you wouldn't ever expect, you know, Nook's Cranny just to randomly have over there. So where do our villagers shop where they get access to way more cooler things than whatever Nook's Cranny seems to regularly have? Now, I guess DIYs could explain some of it, but I don't know, especially when it comes to food items, I just have questions. And then if we go just one more step deeper down this rabbit hole. What's the deal with the different types of animals that are already existing animals? Like if we have a frog villager and then we find a frog, for example. Or what about this turtle here? Is this the same type of turtle that Tortimer is technically? When I spent 100 days on Animal Crossing for the original GameCube, at one point, one of my psychopath villagers posted onto the bulletin board that they buried a hamster in one of the acres and I went over there to dig it up to find a living caged hamster. There's also hamster villagers. So are these the same thing? I mean, obviously not, but are we into a whole nother form of this evolution thing? theory that we're gonna have to look into in regards to how we have branches where both this type of hamster and this type of hamster exist in the same universe in one way or another? Should we feel guilty for catching things like frogs and turtles when there's like frog villagers? I don't know, I just have always felt like this is a gray area when it comes to Animal Crossing. Okay, let's talk about scamming in Animal Crossing. We know from past experiences already that scammers exist in the Animal Crossing universe. We know that Red will sell you a painting that might not be authentic and you can find out the hard way, and we know that in Animal Crossing Wild World, Lyle was up to some tricks with his little insurance fraud scam where he would force you to pay for insurance fraud and you couldn't get out of it unless you just never talked to him in the first place, which now I know better. Listen, I'm a victim of insurance fraud in Animal Crossing. And we're already suspicious about Gracie, like we said earlier in this video, but what if there is maybe another scammer? One that it seems like is written from the perspective of being a scammer, though they also might totally not be a scammer. Yeah, let's talk about Katrina for a second. Now, Katrina is a pretty interesting Animal Crossing character who's been in pretty much every single game so far running the fortune telling shop. Now here's the deal, when it comes to Katrina so many times, the way that her dialogue is written is almost supposed to be written in a way where it sounds like this is obviously a very obvious scam where this fortune teller who's supposed to see all or see into the future can't. 
and is just making stuff up as she goes along. It's not a professional setup. In City Folk, I had a light fall on my character's head. I mean, you even start to question, is Katrina really all that insightful in the first place? Remember, we've gotten the, remember that the bad times are just times that are bad quote from Katrina at one point. She'll say things like, I hope you find much happiness. If you don't, well, that's life. Man, I paid money for this info? I'm sure it'll be all better by dawn tomorrow. No guarantees, of course. Okay. So this is something that's very interesting with Katrina, though, is the fact that she's written from this perspective where she doesn't seem like a reliable source, not a real fortune teller, except everything that she does predict actually comes true or has influence at least in the game. It is a part of the game mechanic. In the older games, there was a whole luck mechanic associated with this character, and in the newer games, you can influence your friendships with other villagers based on what happens with your talks with Katrina and how much money you pay. So at the end of the day, what is the deal with Katrina? Is she actually a fortune teller who has control over these powers despite all of the little intricacies writing this character into feeling like she's a fake? Or is she just a a character that has no real powers, but is written in a way that when players interact with her, the player's own desires are taken into account by the game, and the idea is supposed to be the character manifesting certain things to happen. I don't think we'll ever get a clear-cut answer for this one, because it's up to interpretation on what the creators of Animal Crossing wanted this to appear as, but it is a very intriguing topic nonetheless, that we know interacting with Katrina can change the outcome of certain things in our Animal Crossing day-to-day, -day, but is it actually because of her, or is this character a scam? Okay, one more character that there are theories about that could possibly lead to some discussion as to whether or not she's a scammer, and we just did an entire video where we looked into the backstory and lore of every single special Animal Crossing character, and somehow we missed one character. I don't know how I happened to miss it, but we somehow skipped over Sahara, so let's talk about her real quick. Now, first of all, Sahara is an interesting character because she's one of the few characters across Animal Crossing games where in the Japanese and Korean versions of the game, Sahara is a male, where in other localizations, she's a female character. Now, interestingly enough, we know that Sahara is characterized as a foreigner, which is likely attributed to the fact that the way that she speaks is very different from regular dialogue across normal characters in Animal Crossing. While her role is different in every Animal Crossing game, it's very clear that this character is supposed to be some exotic rug seller or something like that. But here's the deal. Apparently in Animal Crossing City Folk, if you talk to a cranky villager, there's a chance that they will suggest that Sahara isn't necessarily who she says that she's in. Your villager will make the claim that they've seen Sahara performing at the Marquee, which is like that comedy show area in the city center in City Folk, and believe it or not, apparently she didn't have an accent. Now, of course, this isn't the first time that a cranky villager will spread some sort of scandalous rumor. We've talked in the past about the whole Tortimer possibly buying plasma screen TVs with the boondocks funds, so it is possible that the cranky villagers just like to make up stuff for gossip, and that's cool, but what if they're telling the truth here, and Sahara is operating on a much higher level than any of us anticipated? Maybe Sahara's just been selling some recycled rugs that she finds in the back streets of the city, dusts them off a bit, and then comes around with this exotic accent and tries to make these rugs sound way more interesting and cool and exotic than really what they are. I mean, in Animal Crossing New Horizons, she does have some of the best floor pieces, though, so I guess no harm, no foul? But I'm watching you, and if you try anything sketchy, we're on to you, Sahara. Okay, then we have one more question that kind of brings us full circle to where we started with this video. We don't really know to the full extent the involvement of humans in Animal Crossing. It's still vague, but we can't help but to wonder, do real-world locations exist in the Animal Crossing universe? There are so many references to places that do exist in real life that you would assume, of course, it has to be, right? But how would these real locations work considering everything that exists in the Animal Crossing world? I mean, there are outdoor furniture pieces for pyramids, the Statue of Liberty. These are just to name a few on top of all of the other real world references that are in Animal Crossing. We know Harriet has like the French flag on her apron. Across a lot of the games, Gulliver has mentioned so many locations, both real and Nintendo fictional. And then there's all of the art pieces, which are real art pieces in the real world. Matter of fact, if you think about it, all of the art pieces are either the real authentic art pieces or fake reproduction art pieces. Why aren't these in a real museum and not like on a boat? I'm starting to wonder if Possibly this theory of Animal Crossing villager evolution leads to a bigger story as to what's really happening in the Animal Crossing universe. In the past, we've definitely talked about the purgatory theory for Animal Crossing, but what if this isn't 
a purgatory where everyone's dead, but instead the post-apocalyptic world of survivors. It could make sense why we're able to just uproot the Statue of Liberty and bring it to our own island, or why it's up to our villager to collect all of these very famous paintings and get them safely preserved in our museum. Could this be why things are so primitive in our towns and it's up to us to build our own towns and cities up? I don't know. That's just something to think about, I guess. But hey, if you enjoyed this video and you like these Animal Crossing videos, make sure you subscribe with notifications on. That'd be really cool. Also, check out the other video we did when we looked at 30 minutes of Animal Crossing's Unsolved Mysteries. There's not much of a crossover between these two videos, so if you want even more, you can just keep on going. Okay, that's it. We'll see you guys next time with a new video.